was meant to be a, a very different kind of video. I've been hearing a fair bit of talk recently about rugged smartphones. A bunch of phones which supposedly have ultra endurance, extreme strength, and hyper connectivity. I saw a bunch of stuff like stop buying breakable phones, rugged phones are cool now. I saw the best rugged phones of 2021. I saw how a lot of these phones are referred to as indestructible. So, you can probably imagine that I'm reading this thinking, yeah, I mean, they certainly sound impressive. Maybe you've got a point. So, I got hold of the two best rugged phones on the market. The Ulefern Armor 10 and the Blackview BL6000 Pro, which both supposedly retail at $700. And the video that I was planning to make was something like, hey, check this out. I've got two really interesting, unusual options that you might not have considered. But as I actually started to use them, something dawned on me. Like, let's take this Hewlett phone. Now, on the surface, it's pretty well presented. The phone's on top, and you do get a glass screen protector inside, which is a really nice touch. But the first red flag comes when you look at the quality of the cable and the charging adapter. This thing is 18 watts, but it, it just feels cheap. It does not scream $700. And while yes, I mean, it's 2021, at least we get one, charging is far from the only issue here. See, I remember looking at this phone's webpage thinking, this is amazing, it does so much cool stuff. But if you really break it down, this is just good marketing. The actual spec sheet of this phone is kind of appalling. You are getting a 64 megapixel main camera, yes, but it has no optical image stabilization, it takes ages to actually snap a shot, and let's be real, in 2021, you can get a 64 megapixel main camera on a $250 phone, and every other one of the sensors on this thing are extremely weak at just eight, five, and two megapixels. And the display is, Honestly, I don't, I don't even have words for it. It's got bezels that make it look like something out of 2017, but more importantly, it's 60 Hertz 1080p LCD panel inside of it makes it feel like something out of 2013. I mean, sure, it does have a nice high capacity battery. That seems to be a theme on these rugged phones in general. But apart from that one thing, it's, it's almost just confusing how poorly equipped this is compared to other $700 phones, like the Xiaomi Mi 11. And again, with this Blackview phone, you look at the website and you think, wow, this has everything. But it's actually an almost identical spec sheet to this phone. But instead of a 64 megapixel main camera, you get 48. Also, for some reason, both of these are claiming to be world's first 5G rugged phone. How does that even happen? Did they like coordinate launches so they release at the exact same minute? So I guess they could effectively be joint first? I don't know. But what I do know is that if you are enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be divine. So what is going on here? Are we actually paying nearly three times as much money just for the sake of having better materials? And are these actually better materials? Well, if you take a look at our $250 Poco X3, you get glass, aluminium, and then plastic. What do we get on this Blackview phone? Well, glass, aluminium, and the truly exquisite rubber. I know. But do you want to know the funny part of this is that the glass you actually get on the front of this phone is Gorilla Glass 3. The glass we get on the cheap phone is Gorilla Glass 5. This Ulephone does seem a bit better. Instead of just rubber, it's got a little bit of metal in it too. But you see why I'm having a problem with this, right? It's not like they're being wrapped in a sheet of diamond for unrivaled protection. We're talking about rubber and cheap metal. You could literally make a whole phone's worth of those materials for a dollar. In fact, isn't this just a bit like paying three times as much money just to have a massive case on your phone? But just a case that you can't actually remove. And a case so large that your one phone becomes effectively the thickness of two phones. This thing weighs 328 grams. So there's only one way to find out. I bought my own cases. I bought the cheapest rugged cases I could find. I mean, just look at this thing. They couldn't even come up with a brand name, so they just called it Case. And so I got two affordable phones, the Poco X3 and the OnePlus Nord, and applied them to those. And so we're about to see right now, are these rugged phones actually more durable? Okay, welcome to my uh, factory of destruction. So we've got six tests, and the idea is that each test is gonna be more brutal than the last. So. We're gonna start with water, because in theory at least, water should be one of the things that these rugged phones are like particularly good at. Like both of these rugged phones come equipped with not just an IP68 rating, which means immersible, but also an IP69K rating, which basically means the ability to withstand not just high pressure, but also high temperature jets of water. 
But this test right here is just the equivalent of like dropping your phone in a toilet bowl. Let's just quickly check. They're all fine. So let's move on to the second test. I just held up three fingers. <laughs> so let's move on to the second test. I've got a hose and we're gonna turn it on maximum power for two minutes. It's not quite an extreme high pressure jet, but it's close enough. It's as close as any normal person would get in any normal kind of day. It also just happens to be about 50 degrees Celsius water. So, you know, it's also pretty hot too. All right, let's have a look if they're okay. Okay, rugged phone number one is fine. Rugged phone number two is absolutely fine. Okay, one plus Nord is fine. And the Poco X3 is also fine. But what about scratches? Well, I have got just the tool for that. A cheese grater. No? Too cheesy? So this would be a pretty good way of testing how resistant these phones are to damage from metals. So coins, keys, that kind of thing. We'll start with the rugged phones. Oh God. Okay, let's uh, see what we're working with. So starting with these two rugged phones, we've, we've actually got two very different degrees of damage. So if you look at this black view, I would actually say it's beaten up. It's got minor level scuffs across the whole thing, but also quite a few deeper level gouges. Uh, the Ulephone's doing better. It's got some damage around the metal camera ring and around the fingerprint scanner, but I would say generally speaking, the, the integrity of the back is better. But here's the thing. If you look at this Poco phone, you realize that it has had no more significant damage on it than those rugged phones. And the benefit of using a case as opposed to it actually being the phone itself is that if you want to, you could take it off. That is $2 of scrap material and the phone is actually unmarked. But what about the front glass? Well, I've got a set of Mohs hardness picks here. So we're gonna start with a level six and this is just gonna test the durability of the screens themselves. Okay, so now let's move to a level seven. And then just for a bit of fun, let's do a level eight. Oh la la. So to be honest, generally speaking, they've all resisted level six and level seven surprisingly well. The main damage you can actually see is from the level eight pick and it's actually consistent across all of them. Funnily enough, actually, the phone with the least damage done to it is the cheap Poco X3. So it's not looking great for these rugged phones right now, but uh, it's time to make absolute sure that we break something. So I've got my trusty hammer. We've got a 40 centimeter marker here, and we're gonna drop this on them from there. All right, let's do this. pretty impressive. Oh, the glass is cracked. Interesting. Absolutely shattered. Okay, phone number two. Phone number three. And phone number four. All right. That is an incredible result. So the two phones consistently with the least amount of damage on them are the two cheap phones with the cheap cases. So if you look at this Poco X3, it's got some screen cracking, but the screen is still completely usable. And the OnePlus Nord looks like nothing's happened to it. And I can actually tell you why, because it looks like these cases have a little bit of a ridge on them, which the rugged phones don't absolutely mad like look at these phones they are absolutely totaled the screens do seem to still be working but this is enough of a crack that you wouldn't really want to use them okay we've saved the biggest till the end there is one more test I'm going to show you in just a minute but you could probably already tell that rugged phones you probably shouldn't buy one like, for these to make sense for you, you would have to A, be someone who just did not care about camera, performance, or even display, B, be someone who works in an extreme environment, and C, on top of that, you would also have to be someone who is actually exposing their phone to those extremes. 
Like, let's say, even if I was like a construction worker, and even if I was using a lot of high pressure jets at work, I still don't really need my phone to be jet resistant, right? Unless I actually think that I'm at risk of dropping it and then accidentally spraying it right up the USB-C port. Now, there are just two important things to bear in mind. One, that yes, there are rugged phones out there that are better value for money, like the Doogee S96 Pro, which is about $300. But it's still not good value. The second thing is that what I've seen a lot of these rugged phone companies do is put their own phone on sale. Like they're making so much of a margin that every now and again, they'll just be like, oh, by the way, guys, if you hurry up, you can buy this phone for 399 instead of 699. And they'll pitch this to customers as if it's some sort of legendary flash sale, when actually the specs of the phones are so poor that even at 399, I still wouldn't recommend them. Okay, it's the final test. I feel like I don't need to explain this one. We've got a golf club, we've got some phones, and uh, I've got my ridiculous children's goggles because I don't actually have any proper lab glasses. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's start with the rugged phones. Okay, now this is the Eulophone. This is very satisfying. Okay, it flew straight out of the case and I'm pretty sure into three parts. Oh dear. And finally, we're going to finish with the OnePlus Nord, which has been the most durable phone in this process so far. Okay. Oh my goodness me, that was a lot of pieces. That was a lot of pieces. Okay, let's assess the damage. I don't think I've seen anything like that. Um, okay, so this, let's start with the OnePlus Nord. So that's the case. Uh, that's the other part of the case. Uh, oh my God. So this is part of the phone. That's absolutely unbelievable. I wonder, I wonder if the battery's exploded. I think the point is, is that a normal phone, even with a rugged case, cannot survive that. Okay, what about the Poco? So this is the screen. Uh, sorry, this is the case. This is the screen by the looks of it. Oh my Lord, it's absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Again, that, that is a new record for this channel. And I think the phone went over here. This is what's left of it. Interestingly, that the plastic on the back is completely intact. And then that's the inside. And again, there's a mysterious battery disappearance. I can see the two rugged phones here as well. So this is, <laughs> oh my God. This is the Eulophone, um, technically still in one piece. So I suppose if you do accidentally hit your phone with a golf club, a rugged phone will probably survive a little better. But if you look inside, you can see the entire circuitry. It's, it's done, yeah. And then this right here is the last rugged phone and it's the Blackview. Somehow you've actually still got a slight backlight going for the LCD screen. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend using it in this state. Okay, if you enjoy my general style of videos, you will almost definitely like brilliant. The way I would describe it to people is as a way to make yourself better, just sharper, faster, more knowledgeable. You just pick a course. It could be storytelling, it could be coding, it could be the science of logic. And it teaches you all the key concepts of them in a way that really makes you wonder, what were my actual teachers doing? I've actually been doing this one all about how search engines work. And it's kind of like you're learning it without realizing that you're learning it. Like one minute I was solving puzzles involving Sherlock Holmes. The next I was answering questions about playing cards. And then all of a sudden it's like, bam, chapter complete. And I had this moment of, 
whoa, I actually understand it. So I've left a special link in the description for Brilliant, and if you do click on that, it will really help to support this channel. It's free to try, and if you do decide to go down the premium route, then this link will also give you 20% off the normal price. Okay, thank you so much for watching. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.